<laughs> uh, I'm going to present uh, our work on uh, system initiative conversational information seeking. Uh, I am now a PhD student at Northeastern, but this is some, one of my last pieces of work that I did with the Meads of Money at uh, CIR at uh, UMass Amherst. Okay, um, so I'll start with like a brief description of what conversational information seeking entails. It is essentially an act of a user trying to seek some form of relevant information from a digital assistant. Uh, it can span across various modalities. Uh, it can happen via Amazon Alexa if you're trying to seek uh, some assistance through voice, or it could be through chatbots, which are pretty ubiquitous on e-commerce platforms, or you can use them to book airline tickets, so on and so forth. Uh, Traditionally, how the system has really worked is that uh, the, you have an agent, which is either constantly listening to you or your chatbot, which is waiting for your input, and the user engages in some form of um, conversation or some form of query, and the agent processes that query, and it may or may not give a response. If it gives a response, then there's been a, quite a bit of work evaluating that response, how to improve that response. However, uh, we are interested in uh, making a case for the system itself trying to initiate a conversation. Uh, what would that look like is, is something that, that we're trying to investigate here. So we came up uh, with four different use cases. There could, of course, be more. This is something that we came up with, uh, uh, the, the possible use cases. Uh, these are like four different broad scenarios under which a system might be of some use to like engage in a conversation, uh, starting off with something like a recommendation. So nowadays, a lot of users create and maintain to-do lists for their daily activities, and a few recent recommend uh, recommender systems have been developed to re-rank and recommend the next to-do item. Uh, some of the to-do items can be time sensitive uh, and a CIS system can instantly initiate a conversation to notify the user that the deadline for doing something or yet to be done is, is approaching. This is something that, that we broadly still do, but it, 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 in a CIS setting, it's, it's still, still something that has not been done. Uh, another category could be a feedback request. Uh, uh, under the current popular systems, you have users that are often indiscriminately targeted uh, to provide views of products right after they purchase them. You can see this happen with Amazon Alexa. Uh, uh, or they are usually, the, the conversation is initiated by the agents after a predefined period of time. Uh, factoring in the category of products along with user metadata could also enhance such a system's ability to gauge what moment would be the best sort of opportune moments to engage in some sort of conversation. Uh, then you have uh, multi-party conversations. Uh, this is broadly unexplored in the literature. Uh, this one possible use case that we were trying to think about uh, of a CIS engagement in a human-human uh, interaction could be that of monitoring uh, a multi-party conversation for factual accuracy of the underlying content that is being talked about. And then, of course, there's content filtering, uh, also something being done, something that is still uh, in play, but nothing, uh, if, nothing is being done to sort of make systems actively engage in conversation. This is this broadly relates to health and safety related information uh, that is of time sensitive nature. Uh, for instance, attacks or events that may lead to safety risks or hazards for a user should be instantly mentioned by a PIS system that is watching uh, or streaming these information sources. Anyway, so these are broadly the four different uh, categories across we looked at where we thought that uh, a case could be made for a system initiative conversational a CIS agent. Anyway, so uh, the next question is what would a framework for a system initiative CIS uh, look like? Uh, and we came up with the, the broad ta taxonomy of these uh, across these three different dimensions. The first one would be the initiation moment, which is of course the most important thing. Uh, when do you exactly uh, initiate a conversation? So you could initiate a conversation instantly, which could be defined as initiation of a conversation by a CIS that is mostly based on a user's current situation. And then of course, there would be some sort of an opportune moment initiation, the thing that I talked about earlier that uh, the, the, the initiation of the, the, the system knows that it has to initiate a conversation, but it's simply waiting or postponing it to an opportune moment that is decided by the, the CIS system. 
Uh, then, of course, there's the institution means, which broadly relates to the modality of interaction and operation and the modality of processing. Modality of processing, there's like not a whole lot of wiggle room there. Uh, processing is, is, is pretty constant. Then uh, there's, of course, some broad scope. Uh, there's some uh, uh, room to figure out what could be the modality of interaction and operation, whether you have uh, a CIS engaging into conversation through a voice means or through text, so on and so forth. And then uh, another important uh, dimension would be the initiation purpose. Um, CS conversations might be triggered by availability of new data that might be of interest to the user or uh, based on the current situation of such as user profile, location, time, or by the modification, by doing some modification to the system itself. Um, the lag may happen, for example, uh, if a new development of the CIS model leads to an understanding that a system provided false information to a sensitive topic in the past interaction and now wants to initiate a conversation to correct its past mistake, something like that. So to devise a framework, we came up with this taxonomy across these three dimensions. And uh, if you look at these three dimensions, uh, we, we looked at how a framework um, might come into play. So if you were to formalize this problem, uh, we have the user. We have user profile uh, and a situational context associated with the user profile at a given timestamp. We also have uh, a con uh, all the conversational interactions of uh, a user with a CIS system up to that timestamp. And then uh, a global collection of all information items available at a given timestamp. This could be like from the web. Uh, a system initiation instance object, I'll talk about this in a second, what this really is. And then we have a collection of system initiation instance objects. This is the, basically D is the collection of all I's. Uh, okay, so if you have uh, a, 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 a formal, if you have this, this data, you could broadly, this is the framework that, that we came up with. And, and what this really does uh, is, um, well, lost traffic. Okay. So um, you have a set of past user interactions, a user profile, and a stream of information, which is fed into uh, this model uh, phi of initiation purposes, which is working across these broad categories of filtering, streaming data, recommendations, conversation, follow up, so on and so forth. And using this data, this Phi is essentially a function of the user, user profile, stream of information, and past user interactions. Uh, this model determines, uh, this model produces a function phi, which gets fed, which gets fed into uh, a database of uh, instance collection, which is, oops, which then goes into an initiator decider, uh, which is another function omega of uh, user profile and the, in, the, the instance collection that is being passed. Uh, along with the user profile and the context. And then we make a decision whether or not to initiate a conversation. Uh, phi here is, a, like I said, it's a, it's a function of the user profile, the collection, and uh, this collection the, uh, of all uh, converse interactions with the user and the collection of all information items. So these, the number two, number three, and number four, that, that, that's what phi is, which, get, uh, which then produces an instance collection, which gets fed into an initiator. Initiator here, uh, omega is essentially a probability whether or not given an instance collection and a user profile, the system wants to initiate a conversation or not. Uh, if it does initiate, a, uh, if it does decide to initiate a conversation, then we have another function gamma, uh, which decides whether this is a converse conversation generation or, uh, and then it of course selects the device and the modality of the selection, which then gets fed into an interface. Um, okay. Um, so, sorry, I lost the translation here. Um, okay, so this is broadly the interface that, that we came up with. Of course, there's uh, three important functions here. The phi that is generated with, with the three elements, the omega which is generated with the instance and the user profile, which is the decision to initiate a conversation or not, and then gamma. These are the three different functions that we're trying to evaluate here using whatever models necessary. Okay, so let's say you have a system that is capable of generating um, conversations. How uh, so? And and then of course, 
that agent monitors uh, user response. Uh, the user response we broadly categorize could be uh, ca characterized into these seven different categories, which could be a null action, that is user provides no response to the initiated conversation by the CIS system. A null action is not necessarily a negative feedback since user may find some initiation useful while they're not interested in further engagement. It could be an interruption or negation. This is actually a negative response that users uh, provide a response consistent with the in in interpretation of shutting down any further engagement in the system. This could be thought of as when an Alexa uh, goes off, uh, when, when your alarm goes off in your Alexa and then you're like, okay, Alexa, stop. That's an actual negation or an interruption. Uh, relevant response, this is probably the hardest to interpret, that, that we believe would be the hardest to interpret, uh, the, that the user responds to the initiated conversation by a relevant answer. Now, what constitutes a relevant answer remains to be seen. This is often expected to happen when the initiated conversation involves questions or asks for uh, some kind of feedback. Postponement could be when the user responds to the initiated conversation and asks the system to remind them at a later time. Uh, similarly, follow up. Uh, could be uh, simply when the user responds with a follow-up response to get further information or performs actions related to that conversation. Uh, critiquing or kind of critiquing is not necessarily also, a, 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 it should be, I mean, we don't think critiquing should be inferred as a feedback. It could also be some sort of clarification seeking response. And then there's topic drift that the user responds, but it changes the topic of the initiated conversation. Given the current status of text classification models and the complexity of this task, it is possible to achieve acceptable classification accuracy and classifying user responses in the above categories. But of course, uh, the, the, the problem would be that how do, how do you process those, those, those responses? Um, the, the, this framework or, and this problem is not without its challenges. There's both technical and evaluation, evaluation challenges. The technical challenges is, of course, how do you produce system initiative instances? And then the, probably the hardest part of this would be uh, producing an initiator model. Uh, so for example, the first step in a system initiation pipeline is to identify the reasons for initiating a conversation and generate a system initiative instance. Uh, but, uh, in other words, one needs to implement a function that takes in a user file, uh, the conversational history of the user and the entire uh, global data stack that is available to the agent with a focus on each initiation purpose. So th this problem might have some uh, roots in various IR tasks, such as filtering or recommendation. However, some of the initiation purposes are relatively unstudied in the literature, at least that, that's what we found, such as following up. Uh, so think of it uh, like following up on a past conversation or contributing to a multi-party conversation. Even the feedback request in the form of an active conversation is, is, is a largely unexplored area. Uh, initiator model, of course, developing, this probably we believe is the most challenging part. Um, uh, because just because of our lack of our knowledge on what generally is the right moment to initiate a conversation. So there's some work on mixed initiative uh, systems, but we couldn't find anything that, that explores like the precise moment at which you could uh, uh, initiate a con. So like we believe that future research should focus on conducting user studies in the wild to explore what could be the right time to initiate a user conversation, if at all. Like some weak supervision signals can be mined from user interactions with the current uh, CIS systems, even if they do not support system initiative interactions. Uh, and then there's, of course, the problem of system initiative utterances. So we believe uh, many uh, techniques developed in dialogue systems and text generation research can be used to implement this component. For example, each instance I uh, uh, each instance I is a structured data object, therefore neural models for unstructured text generation from structured data example, for example, tables can be, can be potentially adopted. We, we don't really, yeah, we don't have a concrete answer for, 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 for this part yet. Then of course there's evaluation challenges. How do you evaluate initiative instances? Like what, what even, because the instance is, is basically a function of user profile and the conversational uh, history. So we don't really know how to evaluate those things. Initiation moments are probably slightly easier to uh, evaluate. You could do user studies, or uh, once you have enough data, you could probably evaluate those. And then, yeah, uh, evaluating the content of initiated conversations, that is the gamma function, which is also kind of a hard problem. Uh, and then end-to-end -end system evaluation, like 
that there's we couldn't figure out how how exactly would you measure success in 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 a situation or at least like how would you automate the process of uh measuring success so that future research can can be like you can you can, you can speed up uh future research um, in the area uh of course there's dangers to to the system that it's not without fail um there's privacy concerns uh, even with existing uh, CIS systems like Alexa and, and Google Home and chatbots, people are not exactly, people are quite concerned about privacy. They don't exactly understand how these agents process their data and what how, how much information they have at any given point in time. So how do you securely uh, uh, use IR to obtain user data and how do you instill confidence that your data is not being misused? Um, and then, like I said, active engagement in a multi-party setting is largely unexplored. Uh, also would probably require user studies to see how comfortable people are with, with something like that. Um, and then there's badly timed engagements. Like even if you're able to come up with a system like that, uh, which does something reasonably, what is the sort of a cost benefit analysis of badly timed engagements? What, what benefit do they provide and what is the cost in case, uh, bad, uh, in case an engagement is, is badly timed? Uh, this partially depends on the initiator decision making systems. And uh, we think it, they could be like really very counterproductive and downright sometimes even even dangerous. For example, if you're driving and uh, you have a badly timed engagement from from an agent uh, for your from your phone or your smartwatch or whatever, so that that, that is something that that is really dangerous. Uh, so we I would conclude with some uh, future directions. So we explored some applications and, and ways to how to model. Uh, an active engagement system and we formulated this taxonomy upon which system could be possibly built but again uh implementing and evaluating such a system in a user-centric way it, it remains a pretty daunting task and finally we feel that the use cases the, the ones that we've defined uh, are only like they only scratch the surface for a much broader case specific applications in the area and and we believe like uh, even if someone were to adopt our framework they, it, it probably would be extremely hard for that framework to generalize. And I think you probably only have to ad adapt it to case specific applications and such. Okay, and that now I'm happy to take any questions. Again, any question from the audience? Well, we have a question from Mohamed. Uh, Hi. Oh. Um, thank you uh, for the presentation. Uh, so I have two questions. Uh, first, um, like the whole presentation reminded me of uh, the so-called zero quality information retrieval systems like Google Now, where the idea was very similar, but in a different context. So how do you think that this um, system initiative systems are similar or different from those systems? Well, uh, th this is much, uh, so this is probably a much broader, like, I, I, I would say system, in, the, the things that, that we're defining is, is probably like a superset uh, of zero query systems. Uh, the, these, these could probably be applied in, in a much broader set of applications. And, and I think the, the, the zero query systems that the, one of the ways Google does that, I, I think it's, it's somewhat implemented. So for example, in Google Maps, it often tells you where the speed traps are. And if you pass those speed traps, it often asks you whether the speed trap is still there. That would probably be some sort of example of, of like a zero query system, but, but that uh, sort of thing doesn't always translate to things like recommendations or something like uh, following up on a past conversation or something like that. Yeah, it, it, it's, those systems I would say are probably based strictly on what the user need is. All right, but I think like Google Now was a bit broader than that. For instance, you, you book a flight and then it starts recommending you things, attractions in the in your destination. Yes. Yeah, th that is, uh, yeah, th that is pretty similar to, uh, th that is pretty similar to in the applications that, that we proposed. Uh, okay, and then uh, another thing I was wondering is that, uh, so in this kind of, a framework you know when to initiate uh, the conversation but do you think that after the initiation of the conversation 
the rest would uh, follow similarly to what you No, used? that yeah, that is a yeah, <laughs> that's a good question. That that is the challenging part. So the in, in I think section four of the paper we 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 talk a little bit about how do you evaluate like even if you're able to somewhat reasonably engage in a user conversation then the next task is to uh respond to the user responses and th that's why we categorize the user responses so that in itself would be like a subtask within this broader framework of how do you evaluate user responses the user might th this is the thing this is the part this is part of the unknown users often respond unpredictably Sure, you could you could you could not always assume that they they would respond exactly the way you want them to. So yeah, th th that remains a pretty challenging task. Okay, we have a question online from David. Mm -hmm. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Well, thank you for the presentation. I think it's a really interesting idea. Um, I did want to ask about it. Um, so I, I'm thinking of like times that the like the system like or my phone will alert me for things like emergency situations amber alerts or other safety things definitely makes sense for a system initiated uh, like situation but i guess um yeah, are there ways that we can avoid um situations where the conversation would be irritating for initiating like a lot of times where i want my phone to like set an alarm or other things like that i'm deliberately setting up uh, it's saying like, yes, I want you to do this. Yeah. So, what is the question? Like, uh, so, what, I what guess is... how how can we have these system initiated setups, but also avoid some of the situations that would be like irritating to have something like, uh, you know, telling you the tenth time to do some chore that you don't want to do or something. Right. 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 Yes. Uh, yeah, that, that would be part of the user profile, how well a system learns your user profile, given your conversational history. So uh, rather than redundantly repeating something as like clockwork, it has to be some sort of a pattern. Uh, the, the, that's, I guess that's the intelligent part of the system, like whether it can intelligently detect whether you want to do something or not, even though you've done the same thing in the past. For example, let, let, let's say you're at home and, and you do something like clockwork at home and, and you're repeatedly doing something like that at your home. Uh, but this one fine day you're on a vacation or on, on, a, on a two day tour or something like that. And the agent now knows that your location has changed. So you may or may not want to do the same task, something like that. That, that. That's all part of the user profile, depending on how much information you choose to give to the system. Gotcha. Okay. Yes, Thank you. That's what we are incorporating. Yeah. Okay, and we have another question from Christians. I think you're muted. Yep, can uh, you? Oh. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, very nice talk. I like how you structured everything. And uh, I'm wondering if you thought about uh, uh, this context, this situational context in a similarly structured way. Uh, you know, what would be a possible taxonomy of this context for uh, uh, studying them? Uh, I, can you elaborate? Like, what do you mean? So, um, yeah, I could ask back, like, what, what do you mean by context? Like, there are so many different contexts. Oh, oh okay, okay, yeah. And uh, can you think about them in a structured way? Yeah, completely application specific. Context could mean user profile. Uh, depending what your specifics are, or depending on in, in what way this is implemented and for what, for, for example, context could, if it is implemented for shopping or e-commerce, or like if Amazon decides to do this, then context would, would probably mean a user profile, their activity on, on, on the website as it relates to the website. Uh, if it is implemented for by Yelp, which is trying to seek reviews, then context would probably mean uh, the your location and your reservations and, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, context is it's, it's pretty variable. It's a variable term that we use to describe the uh, overall information that the system has about you as the user. Yep, uh, I understand that. I'm just wondering if you thought about, uh, you know, mapping out potential uh, contexts i'm not specifically no we were thinking of like 
broad terms. Okay, okay. Uh, I, uh, so those what you listed are all valid uh, ones. And, and you could also think about, you know, even when doing shopping online, you might be yes. in different modes. You could be in a yes, discovery yes. mode or, okay, just uh, get me the item that I want uh, fastest possible. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, one of the things is that, uh, so the, it, the initiation moments that I talked about, that, that could be an instant initiation or an opportune moment initiation. Context would also differ in, in those two situations, depending on when do you want the, for example, like you said, you're shopping. So that that could that is an example of instant initiation. But if you're shopping and you need assistance, then the system needs to engage in a conversation right now. That, 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 is, that, that is a sort of a time sensitive thing. But uh, yeah, I, I completely agree with you that uh, context could vary depending on the applications. And of course, you're not limited to the categories that, that we listed. There, there could be more. OK, mm, no more questions? I guess not. OK, let's thank the speaker again.